GPS Gamer Episode 8 Endless Fanta. Um, today I'm reviewing two games as usual. Um, I wanted to implement a new feature, but I've been having trouble with it, so you might see something new in the next episode. Uh, as of now, it's just going to be a regular episode. Um, two games I have for you today are very different. First game is Endless Ages. This is actually a mul massively multiplayer MMO FPS. I know I have said I will never do MMORPGs, but this is very different from the traditional. Korean clone of every other clean Korean MMO ever bloody made. Uh, and I think you might enjoy this game. Uh, second review is Fantascape, which is um, well, a freeware RPG sl slash real-time strategy. It's really good fun. Um, I won't delay you any longer. Get you started with uh, the main review now. Enjoy. Endless Ages is currently the only complete and free MMO FPS out there. It's been around for quite a long time although it's changed ownership multiple times with varying results. Now, is this version going to be as successful as the initial release, or more so? Or is it going to be a total flop, begging to move on to more capable owners, or just finally be left alone to die in peace? When you first get into the game, you are left to wander in Newbie Island with helpful NPCs and billboards explaining the basics of the game. There are two quests which are easy enough to find, and once done, you can move on to the main world. I found this newbie area to be a bit deceiving, as it was pretty straightforward, and once you leave you are pretty overwhelmed with the main world. At first it is a bit tough to figure out what to do, and it does help to meet somebody who will show you the ropes, although I did manage to figure out quite a bit on my own. The main way to start, however, is usually talking to your race's leader will give you the traditional kill x number of x creatures for me type quest. Speaking of quests, I'd like to discuss them a bit more. While the first real quest you do outside of Nubi Island is typical of every other MMO in the whole damn world, it's the only one of its type in the game, although it has many stages meaning you will be doing it for quite a while. However, all other quests are far more interesting and exciting. Some quests will have you hunt down robots angry brothers who will usually type try to kill you by sending evil beasts at you which you must defeat in one-on-one -on -one combat. Other quests are trade school related, and there's also item hunts for you to do. The quest system I would certainly call a strong point in this game. Being an MMO first-person shooter, you do expect guns. So how exactly are the guns? Well, to be honest, they do vary quite nicely. They don't handle anything like Unreal Tournament or any other traditional FPS, but they are certainly more interesting than typical MMO, click on baddie, click on baddie again, click on spell, then baddie again, repeat. The guns are usually things like projectile weapons, insta-hit laser guns, and splash damage projectiles, all with varying delay times, range, and damage output. The guns do animate real nicely, and definitely win points for being quite original. Enemies are also pretty cool. They have an out-of-this-world alien feel to them, and some of the quest-specific enemies are humanoids, which result in interesting duels. Enemy sizes differ real nice as well. You'll be fighting tiny creatures at first alone and sometimes having to team up with friends or really lucking out on some of the really big monsters in the game. The world map is big and interesting enough. It has a main town for each race and lots of wilderness areas with plenty of caves to explore and other dungeon type areas. Travel can be accomplished by the use of traveler NPCs or by walking and flying using your jetpack, wings, vehicle or mount. It is also possible to transform into creatures you kill by picking up orbs they sometimes leave behind after they die, and using these orbs. Different creatures have strengths and weaknesses, some having uses in travel as well. My main gripe with most free MMOs is that there is nothing to do but combat. Luckily this is not the case for Endless Ages. While combat is the obvious main focus, one can harvest materials and make armor, weapons, ammo and potions which they can then use or sell to other players via the simple and convenient auction screen. Even the combat varies quite a bit, although I don't much see the point in using the Magic or Melee system when the game is clearly an FPS, it's nice to see that they are there. But I'm not really going to touch on them at all in this review. The game has three races, regular humans, brutish blobics, and frogs referred to as amphibians. While they do provide different weapons in starting locations and a subtle difference in handling, 
the overall gaming experience is not that different from one race to another. As far as the community goes, uh, just about everyone I've met is extremely nice, friendly, and very helpful. The only problem is that I could count the number of people I meet in one play session on my fingers on just one hand. Sadly, this is not the only game's flaw. It does take a very long time to advance in levels at later points in the game, and there is little focus on organized PvP. Although what PvP you do find is a bit more fun and skill-based than your traditional MMO. The sounds are also quite lacking, and sometimes the game seems to suffer from a lack of direction, meaning you log in the game and just wonder, so what the hell do I do now? One positive that I didn't really touch on, however, is the scenery. While the graphics are far from a commercial FPS of today's date, there is no denying that nighttime scenes can be breathtakingly beautiful, and the water effects are also very, very nice. I would like to conclude by saying that while Endless Ages is far from flawless, it's very fun and very original. And it's a huge injustice that the countless free MMOs spewing out of Korea are all identical and far more populated than Endless Ages. This game deserves a much larger player base. I urge you to download this game and certainly give it a try. It's good fun and a rewarding experience should you put the time into it. But approach it with an open mind for it does have its flaws. Okay, uh, now to rate the game, low specs about 4 out of 5. It works well on low rigs, more than can be said about most other free MMOs. Um, the overall rating is 3 out of 5. Its originality alone would land at a 5 out of 5, but the flaws and lack of player base do knock it down a couple of points. Fantascape is an RPG slash real-time strategy game. Uh, every game uh, starts with this sort of screen where you're basically uh, taking con care of your people. You can hire new people, level them up, or change the class. Once you've uh, gone on and done that, you pick your um, what level you want to play, in this case level 1, and you're in this screen. Now basically, you choose to dispatch your troops and they're done, and uh, you go on killing all the monsters. You've got all sorts of useful screens, such as the map I've just opened. Um, the characters I've got you start with are the fighter, who I'm using now, um, the mage, and uh, the healer. Uh, the fighter is obviously the melee, mage is um, ranged magic, and the healer is my healer. Um, characters gain XP usually by killing, although the healer gains XP uh, every time she heals. Uh, whenever you kill an enemy, they drop usually gold, but they can also drop spells, like this case, uh, that is a um, defense up spell, which my mage will be picking up now. Um, also, they can also drop upgrades to your attack power, your armor, um, things like that. The gameplay really just consists of controlling your characters one at a time. Sadly, there's no mass control, which can be quite annoying. but it's all just basically using your RPG style characters to clear the level, which is randomly generated by the way. Um, I'm gonna leave you with some gameplay from that one. I'll just like to explain a few more things uh, before they show up. Uh, there's a day night cycle. At night, all your characters will automatically uh, start a campfire, no matter what their order, current orders are, which can be annoying if in the middle of a fight, they'll just sit down in front of the fire and get grass headed. There is no real AI, you need to order them around for everything. If someone attacks them, you need to order them to fight back. Which means you gotta be keep an eye on them at all times. Um, most of the game involves you just having to organize who gets experience where, you know, and then in between levels, you just uh, upgrade, you can get new newer characters, you know, slightly more advanced fighters, a thief, things like that, an archer. But they're very quite nice. There's a lot of a lot of content in the game.